and welcome everyone, this is Kalebovich coming to you with another episode of Deck Check. Now the new set of Eternal, Echoes of Eternity, is upon us, and with it a plethora of over 200 cards we've never seen before. Uh, well, technically we've seen some of them that were played off of other cards like Timidity or Zalta Exile, but... Okay, about around 200 cards we've almost never seen before, but we've seen similar ones like Torch and Seer, like Lightning Strike and Biting Winds. Okay, almost 200 cards that we've probably never thought of before. Anyway, uh, several weeks ago, before the release of the set, I was tink tinkering around with a Fire Time Shadow sac uh, the Sacrifice deck, based around the Sacrifice mechanic and the uh, Three Color Sight, uh, Profane Nexus. Uh, it turns out this color combination is called Destruction and we have received a ton of cards for that color combination. Uh, also, after building a deck, uh, a Sacrifice Destruction deck in Throne, it turned out that only several of the cards were not available in Expedition, so given that in Expedition uh, you have uh, lower resistance, so to say, because of the uh, more limited card pool. I thought to myself, okay, let's remake that into Expedition. So without any further ado, here is Shrine to Destruction. In Expedition. Shrine to Destruction instead of Shrine of Destruction is just a word play on one of the centerpieces of this deck, Shrine to Carvet, or as some people say, uh, Shrine to Carver. Uh, this is really a card that some of you might have glossed before uh, when the previews were running around and thought to yourselves, hmm. So this is a three cost uh, Stone Scar Relic that says your units have plus two attack, charge and life seal if you have sacrificed a unit this turn. Uh, some of you, including me, might have thought that this is not a great effect. I mean, you have some units on the board, minus one because you, ha you have had to sacrifice something and then you, uh, your other units have Rally with Charge and Lifesteal. So is this such a good effect? And the short answer is yes. And the long answer is yes, yes. Uh, in these three colors, in Fire, Time and Shadow, there is a ton of ways of sacrificing your units and of having a ton of units, a white board, so to say. Uh, so yes, I'm gonna go into e explaining the cards and when synergies come around, I will get to them Obviously, so Shrine to Carve It is the first centerpiece, as I said. You have to have a unit that has been sacrificed on your turn for all your other units to be big, to be fast, and to give you some health. So you can work with this even if you are behind on board, even if you're behind on life total, because you're gonna have turns that swing your the life total around 10 or 20 in your favor. Uh, and this is a huge deal. You also have to remember one fact about Shrine to Carve It. This is uh, not a temporary effect that is uh, on the units that you're playing. This is sort of an aura effect from this relic on your board, which means if you sacrifice a unit while Shrine to Carve It is in play, uh, all your units get bigger. Then if you play a unit, it also gains this effect. If you're attacking the opponent and the opponent destroys Shrine of Carvet in the middle of the attack, your units get smaller. So that is uh, that is something you have to uh, you have to think about whether the opponent can banish it, for example, or disjunction it, because there is a lot of relic removal in this format right now. But also, <clears throat> but also, if you have sacrificed a unit and then you're drawing Shrine to Carvet and then you're playing it. It also triggers the effect because the game state says the game state states that yes, you have sacrificed a unit on this turn. So <clears throat> you you might think, okay, 19 units, isn't it a bit on the lower side, Kalebovich? And I will say not really, because some of the spells give you units, and I'm gonna get to them later on. So first up, we have Kindling Carver, a one cost one one totemite. Uh, a fire totemite from the new expansion that says exhaust this and sacrifice another unit to draw a card, reduce its cost by one this turn, at the end of your turn, discard it. This is one of also one of the centerpieces of this deck, because as long as you have units to sacrifice, A, you are triggering, proccing your, uh, your shrine to destruction, 
uh, B, you are drawing cards, C, you are making them cheaper, so, and you might have seen also that the curve of this deck is very, very low, so usually even if you are, are at zero power, you are able to, to, just, uh, to just get the card uh, and play it. Uh, when you're using it, you have to remember whether you played a power on your turn or not, and this is going to be very important with Ephemeral Wisp as well, a card I'm gonna get to in a moment. But this is really one of the centerpieces. If you're playing against this deck, this is your kill, your must kill card for sure, because this is a ton of advantage uh, for the player of the Shrine deck. Uh, next up, we have Nahid's Faithful. You might have seen, seen him in straight out Cultist Xenon decks in the previous expedition format. Right now, it is still a one cost Xenon, two on Cultist with Life Seal. That on summon, you are able to sacrifice another unit to give this one plus two plus two permanently, which means when you, if you return it back into play. Uh, by any means, it is already a 4-3 unit that you can sacrifice another unit, etc, etc. This unit has two main roles. First of all, it is a one-cost unit, <clears throat> so you have something cheap to play on the, onto the board. And second of all, this is another sacrifice effect that you that is uh, not mandatory, but is available for you if you need to have something sacrificed. Uh, next up, we have uh, a lot of unit production, or rather reproduction. Wait, that came out wrong. Uh, first up, we have one of my earlier favorites from uh, times long ago, Ephemeral Wisp. This is a two-cost time zero one Wisp, but the stat line on this one usually doesn't matter. That says Empower, which means does something when you play a power card. You get to play this from your Void into play, which means this is your sacrificial fodder for all your sacrifice effects. You're playing Ephemeral Wisp, <clears throat> you're sacrificing it, it goes to your Void, you're getting the Sacrifice effect, then you're playing a Power, you're getting this back to play, ready to get Sacrifice again, 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 like a glutton for Sacrificial Punishment or something like that. I don't know, I don't know, I, I did not read his uh, storyline. Uh, next up we have three copies, just three copies because I'm still experimenting with this card, of Endless Nightmare. This is a two-cost Xenon 3-1 Nightmare that cannot block, and pe some people... Mm, might still not read into this card that this cannot block. Fortunately, there is a broken shield animation over it when while it's in play, so opponent probably will know that this one cannot block. But this also has an additional effect of if you have double time, double shadow influence in play, at the end of your turn, if you have four or more remaining power, you get to play this for free from your void. You're not spending the power. You can use multiple effects of multiple endless nightmares on it to, to get this back. So this, th these are actually ephemeral wisps five through seven, but these ones are uh, bigger beating sticks. But you also have to remember that you have to have these uh, uh, this influence uh, to be able to trigger that. So these are your basic sacri uh, sacrifice fodder. But also there is a new legendary card, uh, a two cost fire two on cultists and you gotta remember that this one is a cultist uh, for uh, the arc of soul you have in your market this one on summon get uh, plays a zero one totemite which means it uh, acts sort of kind of like uh, something between a grenadine drone and a spark hatch hatchling hatcher uh, the grenadines that were usually played in sacro in stone scar sacrifice decks before also, if you have 10 or more units in your void, you get to play an 8-8 giant instead of the 0-1 totemite pup. And that is very interesting, especially that later in the game, if you're sacrificing all your cultists that you're producing from different effects, your totemites, etc., etc., you, you are able to have a lot of cards in your void and you are able to play that 8-8 giant instead. Also, this has an ability called Corrupted One, which says... Uh, when this dies, you create a Kato's Shade that you also see here uh, on the left, that is a 2 cost zero one one that dies at the end of your next turn and has the ability of paying 1, the Corrupted 1, to get the Summon Effect once again, that is get, playing a Totemite or a Giant, if you have a ton of units in your Void. Now, you have your Kato, you have your Totemite, you have your Kato Shade, that you're sacrificing to get a totemite. So when you proc through this whole card, you're getting four units into your void, which means your second Kato is more than likely to be able to play you an 8-8 giant into Kato Shade playing another 8-8 giant. And you, if you have sacrificed a card, and sacrificing that Kato Shade is sacrificing a card, that triggers Shrine to Carve It, which means if you have a Shrine to Carve It, in play, 
and you're playing your second or third Kato, you're creating a giant, then you're killing off your Kato, you're sacrificing the shade, you're creating another giant, you have two 10-8 giants with charge, with life steal. Oh my goodness. That is really a huge deal, and this is one of the better cornerstones of this deck when it comes to going wide on the board. Next up, we have four copies of Profane Nexus, the Destruction site, a four-cost, three-durability site that has a very neat constant effect. Uh, when you sacrifice a unit, deal one damage to the enemy player and you gain one health. This is not a huge deal because you are not winning the game off of these pings unless you're running a different version of this deck, obviously. And it also has... Uh, three sacrifice a unit spells into a sacrifice a unit huge dragon with revenge so the spells are soul's fury sacrifice a unit deal four damage to an enemy last right sacrifice a unit to play a sigil of your choice from your deck depleted and devour sacrifice a unit to draw two cards and gain two health uh, one thing one main thing of note is that if you play profane nexus play last rites sacrifice your ephemeral wisp you're getting your Wisp into your Void, you're, uh, you're resolving your card, and that is, <clears throat> uh, that is uh, giving you a Sigil into play, that triggers Empower, and then brings back all your Ephemeral Wisps from your Void into play, ready to be, sa to be sacrificed again. Fun, right? Well, not for them, unless they like it. I don't know, I'm not judging. Next up, we have a ton of spells. Uh, we have four copies of Combust, the one cost uh, Stone Scar spell that uh, says sacrifice a unit to kill an enemy unit, one of the better kill spells out there. And four copies of Worthy Cause, you might know this from the Xenon stint. This is a two cost fast Xenon spell that says sacrifice a unit to silence an enemy unit and give it permanently minus one minus one for each unit in your void. So this is, uh, this is more expensive and more <clears throat> and not always kills a unit than combust uh, but it does rid get rid of a lot of cards that you want to get rid of permanently like ephemeral wisps in the mirror match for example uh, next up we have four copies of crack the earth this is a one cost time fast spell that plays a one one cultist seems very innocent but it does come into play more often than not but it also says you may swap a card from your hand with a five cost card in your black market that is what Expedition has come to in the current format. There are no more merchants and or smugglers. You only have your bargain cards and you have your this cycle of fast spells to grab things from your black market. Uh, this means that your black market should include a lot of five cost cards or only five cost cards. But also the first effect of playing a 1-1 cultist is very good because that is sacrifice, sacrifice fodder. Also, having a cultist matters for Ark of Soul. I'm going to get to that in a moment. But first, another thing. If you have Kindling Carver in play and you're sacrificing another unit to draw a card, but you can't play this turn because it's another power or it's more expensive than you have power already, you can still play Crack the Earth from your hand and swap the card that, that is unplayable for you for a card in your market. So, Kindling Carver, Crack the Earth, or any other of these cards, combo. Certified Kalebovich combo. Uh, so yes, uh, you have four copies of, four different copies, four different cards uh, with five costs in your market, but there's also one Arc of Soul in the market that I finally have to get to. This is a bargain card that says if you hit the enemy player with a cultist, you can play this for one if you have time. Uh, you can play this for one and just play it from the market without having to draw it in any other way. And this says sacrifice a unit, play a sigil of your choice from your deck depleted and gain two health. So there is an option of ramping up uh, if you're playing Crack the Earth on turn one, fast spell, so during your opponent's turn. Then you're attacking with it and you're playing Arc of Saul from your market. Remember, you don't have to sacrifice a cultist. You can sacrifice something like Ephemeral Wisp or Endless Nightmare that you know is gonna get back into play sooner rather than later. Especially that if you're sacrificing an Ephemeral Wisp and you're playing Arc of Soul, you're getting a sigil, a depleted sigil into into play, <clears throat> uh, which means you're empowering and uh, you're getting your wisps back. Nice bargain, really. Uh, next up, we have four copies of Devour, sacrifice a unit to draw two cards and gain two health, easy as pie. 
uh, three copies of Nahid's Choice. Uh, this is a two-cost slow Xenon spell that I allows you to either play two 1-1 one, one cultists, or the enemy player has to discard a spell or sight of your choice from their hand. Usually you're just playing it for the cultists. Uh, so Crack the Earth and Nahid's Choice are additional units, but you also can produce additional units with Display of Destruction. The three cost Destruction Display, hmm, that was simple, that has three modes, and it, remember it is a fast spell. You either can deal three damage to an enemy unit, remember unit, not sight, not player, and you gain three health, or you can sacrifice a unit to get plus six power this turn, or you can play three 1-1 one -one cultists exhausted. Honestly, the first and third mode are the most played ones for me, but the second one also needs some recognition. So let's say you are playing a one, you have a one cost or a two cost unit in play already, and it is your turn three. So on turn three, you are able to play Display of Destruction. You can sacrifice one of those units. You can get plus six power this turn, which allows you to play Crack the Earth, grab a five cost card from your market, but you have to have influence for that, unfortunately, and you are able to play it on turn three. That is a huge, huge ramp up effect. Uh, so that is also something uh, worthy of note. Uh, one other piece of interaction that I wanted to share with you right now, there are some spell negation effects in the expedition format. There is still Daring Griffin, there is Numbing Call, there are some negates like Unseal, etc, etc. If you have a Shrine to carve it in play, and you need to have something sacrificed, and you know the opponent has a Daring Griffin or a Numbing Call in play, if you play Combust, Devour or Worthy Cause, or the second mode of Display of Destruction, something that says Sacrifice a unit to do something, you're sacrificing a unit as a cost. If the spell gets negated, the effect doesn't come into play, but a unit has been sacrificed, and that means, <clears throat> excuse me, and that means that Shrine of Carvet gives you the aura effect of boosting all your units. That is a neat thing to remember for sure. Uh, obviously, there is the 25 power department. Given that the curve is very, very, very low, and you are running stuff like Arc of Soul in the market, card draw like Devour, etc., mm, etc and your uh, last rites off of Profane Nexus, you really don't need, in my opinion at least, you don't need any chance of destruction or Seek Power. I mean, there is Seek Power, but there is also Chant. Not Enchant, but Destruction Chant. This is a new Cargo-esque uh, cycle from the newest set. Draw Fire Sigil, Time Sigil, or Shadow Sigil from your deck for just one, and on, you can decimate, if you have double of each influence, to invoke one of three cards, as usual. So this would be a neat in, uh, introduction, uh, inclusion sorry, into this deck, if it did not have such a low curve. But if you, are, if you have to run a Seek Power in a certain three-color deck from the new uh, five cycles, it's better for you to run one of those chants for sure, because they are stri almost strictly better. I mean, they are multi-faction, multi so they can be negated by Rindra's Choice, but that's about it. I don't even remember if Rindra's Choice is in the format. Let me, let me check. Rindra's Choice, yes, Rindra's Choice. Rindra is here as well. So yeah, there is, that is the only instance where it's, uh, where it's worse, but that's about it. You also gotta remember that there are five banners and five insignias in the format. Fortunately, this deck has uh, two copy can have two copies of Praxis Banner and Stone Scar Banner. Uh, sorry, so this deck has uh, access to two kinds of banners. That's what I wanted to say. So I'm running four banners, twelve seats, and nine sigils, and that's usually about it. The only thing left to discuss is the market, and there is a ton of five cost cards in the market you could put here in theory, but in practice there is not a lot of great five cost. Uh, cards you could play you could put in here. There is like two or three more that I could consider, but that's about it So aside from the Ark of Soul I've already talked about you have Dova the Fearmonger the five cost triple sorry double destruction uh, Nightmare with pledge, but you're playing it in the market. So pledge doesn't matter when you sacrifice another unit draw a card Sure, so this is a Tazbu-esque effect, but you're not losing health. But also Mastery 10, so when it swings twice, you get to play Possessed by Horrors, that is a Cursed Relic, on the enemy player. And that one says, at the end of your turn, of the Cursed player's turn, play a 0-1 Skeletal Dragon. 
but a 0-1 skeletal dragon is not a 0-1 to token. A skeletal dragon is actually a 0-1 actually a flying nightmare dragon with a summon effect that, ha that gives the skeletal dragon plus attack equal to the highest attack unit in your void, which is usually between 2 to 5 unless you you have a giant in your void, so then it's eight. And this is huge inevitability in any board situation. This is like someone said, this is Kodosh sees all on steroids, or rather with fangs, because it ha those tokens have a higher attack. So there is that. In one of my previous versions, I was also running uh, Dova's main deck instead of here in the market, but uh, they were rather clunky. Also playing the all of these in the market allows me to, to have just four uh four cost cards and eight three cost cards and everything else is lower than that so bringing the curve of the deck much much lower next up in the market we have one copy of induced madness a five cost triple shadow curse relic that says when you sacrifice a unit the cursed player sacrifices a unit this is a neat effect but uh, a you need triple shadow which sometimes is difficult but shouldn't be in this deck uh, B, you have to remember that this in a mirror match is your worst card ever because you're allowing your opponent to sacrifice units. I did have one game where I was running the mirror, uh, where I was playing in the mirror. I marketed Induced Madness into my hand and then the opponent just played one Dova, two Dova, three Dova. I mean, I got rid of one, but that's about it. So if I played Induced Madness, the opponent would just sacrifice any unit and draw two cards. So they would be thanking me rather than you know, rather than being very mad at me. Uh, so there is that. Also, there is a, a an interaction between Induced Madness and cards like Combust and Worthy Cause you need to know about, and that is the effect of Combust or Worthy Cause uh, comes into play first, and then the effect of Induced Madness comes into play. So if you're playing Combust on an enemy unit, and you have Induced Madness in play, you're first destroying their unit, then they have to sacrifice a unit from Induced Madness. They cannot sacrifice the unit you are targeting with Combust. And that is good for you. If it was the other way around, Induced Madness would not have any place in this deck whatsoever. So at least they did it correctly. Next up, we have one copy of Oblivion Spike here, a 5 cost 0, 5 relic weapon that has plus 1 attack for each unit in your void. And remember, you, you have to have a lot of units to get those giants in your void usually. So yes, you want this Oblivion Spike is going to have 3, 4, 8 power at least. And this is a, uh, this is a card you can grab if uh, with Crack the Earth if you want to get rid of 1 or 2 units on the opponent's board or if the board is empty and you can swing for lethal. And that's about it. Also against some decks that cannot deal with relic weapons. And last but certainly not, not least, as this is usually my go-to, this Ordova is my go-to first card I'm grabbing from the market. This is, a, uh, this is Scrap Tank, a 5 cost 3-3 three, three, uh, Stone Scar Grenadin that on summon plays 2-1-1 one, one Grenadins. And also says when one of your other units dies, this gets plus 2, plus 2. So A, this is 3 units on the board. B, this is a huge, huge... Um, uh, attacker uh, that you're gonna get that the opponent would have to deal with. Okay, that's a lot of talk about all the cards and most of the interactions. Let's head on to several games that I have pre-recorded. Let me explain how the deck works in those and then we'll, we'll return here to the studio <clears throat> and then I'm gonna talk about some cards that didn't make the cut into this deck because yes, there are a lot of other cards that you could include in such or a similar deck. And the first opponent of note is Jedi EJ. Hi, Jedi. After redrawing, we have an Ephemeral Wisp, two Endless Nightmares, which is a lot of fodder for our Sacrifice effect and a Profane Nexus and all the colors. I mean, what more do you need? <clears throat> Seed of Progress and Creation Chan. So this already tells us he's on some sort of uh, some sort of time fire. Sorry, fire time justice deck. And we're starting off of uh, the Stone Scar banner into Seed of Impulse and probably the three one because it deals more damage than the zero one. So we can uh, start attacking the opponent's face in a moment. He's got something fast here potentially. 
and that is going to be Seer. And he's playing on our unit. Sure, don't worry. He'll be back. I mean, that is one of the advantages of Endless Nightmare over Ephemeral Wisp. You can you can attack the opponent just willy-nilly with it. Also, you gotta remember, hmm, this time I played Ephemeral Wisp because Jedi is probably not gonna kill that, and I want to profane Nexus next into grabbing Last Rite, so I still have an Ephemeral Wisp in play to sacrifice on the following turn. So here we go. Oh, obviously, the shiny profane Nexus into playing Last Rites on my unit, sacrificing it so that I can uh, grab a Sigil and get that Ephemeral Wisp back. It's going to be a Shadow Sigil so that uh, in a couple of turns I can grab that Endless Nightmare, bra Nightmare back. And he's responding with Dragon Forge. That is very unfortunate. He probably has something very nasty in store for us. Display of creation. Draw two random sigils from your deck. Sure. Probably missing another red. And here, I think it's a good moment to devour, to draw into a power. Sure. Display an endless nightmare. I think in this situation, I could play uh, an endless nightmare, but I can just also get it get one back from my void i did not think th these things through i should have not played it just gotten one back for free from the void that was a mistake and he's playing seer to kill the site okay i have another one Hammer of Glory. Your avatar can attack sites, but also when he's attacking units, he's silencing them first, which means I gotta devour my unit so that it is not getting silenced and can get back into play later. There is a shrine to carve it here. That's a good one. Nahid's Choice. At this point, I wanted to see what he's got in hand, and it turns out nothing noteworthy, unfortunately. So I just played my Ephemeral Wisp. Don't know why I played this. Probably to, oh yes, uh, play Soul's Fury, deal four damage to the opponent, and one additional damage off of Nexus's uh, passive, and just deal with that hammer so it cannot uh, keep silencing my units. Uh, one unfortunate thing is that uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have a unit in play to sacrifice at the beginning of my turn. Uh, but, well, this, this is just gonna make me whiff on the last rites. I would rather keep Devour here. I th also think I'm gonna play Ephemeral Wisp and uh, get two Endless Nightmares back. Uh, also having uh, both Display of Destruction Wait, I only have one? Why do I only have one? Hmm. Seer killing the site. Sure, doesn't matter. For a moment there, I thought I had two endless nightmares in my void. Sure, that is getting destroyed. Second attack. Sure, it's getting killed. It'll be it'll be back. Don't worry. And then end of turn we can create three cultists and attack his die show. Shrine one, shrine two. 
just attacking there, playing Endless Nightmare. I was also thinking whether to or not to play <clears throat> to play Ark of Soul from the market. And I opted to do exactly so. Then play one of the shrines to carve it. Get Ephemeral Wisp back. Get Ephemeral Wisp back. Pass turn. You also got to be very wary in these decks of silence effects and mass silence effects like Shenra Speaks. I think this is second shrine, but given that we don't have any sacrifice uh, sacrifice cards, this is not going to come into effect, right now at least. And we have four power, so we can play both of these nightmares. You also have to see that we're still at 26 health. Decimate Silence and Kill All Units instead, we have no stops whatsoever. And that makes us very sad right now. And that only means this game is going to still take a moment. Kato Arena Herald. Yes, we could play this for sure. We cannot sacrifice it yet. But if he kills the pop, sure, so be it. If he kills Kato, we have a shade. Still, that can be sacrificed. And then he's gonna we're gonna have 10 units in our void, or am I miscounting? But he's killing the pup, thank you for that. Okay, this is even better because Nahid's Faithful is allows us to sacrifice a unit. So we're getting a shade, we're using the shade's ability, we're getting a giant, we're playing a power. Caleb, we're playing a power. Oh wait, those have been silenced, never mind. I mean, we are attacking for lethal, just almost out of nowhere, thanks to that uh, Nahid's Faithful. Silence each attacking enemy unit, they, they get minus two attack this turn, means Jedi is on four, can draw another uh, another Shinra Speaks. Has not. Goodbye, Jedi. On to game number two. DJ Warped. Is this a good hand? We don't have any Shadow, but we do have Kindling Carver and Ephemeral Wisp. So that is a cool combination. We also have Crack the Earth, and we can attack with the Cultist to play Arc of Soul from the market as a bargain. So yes, there are some options here. Menace Chant. Good old Fire Primal Shadow. I'm not playing Carver on one. Two phase. We're, they are milling us for two and they have a 2-2 two -two deadly. Just power. And at this spot I opted not to play Crag the Earth. And because I cannot attack through that 2-2. Two -two, just my ephemeral wisp with the plan next turn to play kindling carver sacrifice wisp hopefully get a shadow based power play it get wisp back that means i am not blocking here because that wisp although is a good blocking fodder is also good sacrificial fodder hmm fodder Blazing Salvo, killing our Ephemeral Wisp, whatever shall we do? At least it's not the Shadow one that gives Ephemeral Wisp Void Bound. Into another Mana Chant. So they have a 2 cost Market card and a Sigil in play. And this means I want to play a Sigil to get that back. I'm not playing Carver and using him yet because I don't have Shadow Influence. And uh, most of the cards I, I would draw will, are, will not suffice here. So I want to activate Carver on the turn uh, that I have not played a power. 
That is also why I'm not attacking yet. Sorry, why I'm not blocking yet. Sure, Carver, sacrifice that. Get something. Another Carver, <laughs> sure. We can just play it. We can replay a power. We can get that Wisp back. We can sacrifice it yet again. And we're grabbing an Ahid's choice. I was thinking about ending the turn, but then I remembered that I can just take an Ahid's choice out to pasture, uh, <clears throat> sorry, to market and grab something better like uh, Scrap Tank or Dova. And I went for Dova because I have to sacrifice outlets with two carvers. Skylord Tolek. Hello, nice to meet you. But we're still missing Shadow. Fortunately, the opponent doesn't have any dragons yet. Playing Ephemeral Wisp. Sacrificing Ephemeral Wisp. Finally getting Shadow, playing it, getting two Ephemeral Wisps back. That means I can sacrifice one of them to the other Carver. Getting a worthy cause, that costs one, sure. I can sacrifice my second Ephemeral Wisp. No, Decimating just gives Lifesteal. We don't need Lifesteal right now. Just getting Tolik down, so he can do much against us. Playing the Endless Nightmare and shipping the turn back. What are you going to do, opponent? What are you going to do indeed? Yes. Just attacking with a 2-2, sure, we can take it. Shrine to carve it. Now this is a butte. But first, I'm sacrificing the 3-1. I don't want to play the power yet because I could draw a power. But I have not, so I'm just playing Time Sigil. And, oh look! I have some Ephemeral Wisps. I can sacrifice one of them. Kill Tolek. I can... I could have played Shrine to carve it. But it turns out I wanted to play Arc of Soul uh, on the Ephemeral Wisp. Get two Ephemeral Wisps back. Get another Shadow. And get that... Uh, and get that nightmare back end of turn and have power up for both devour and worthy cause right now i can also just sacrifice one of the wisps to carver to draw yet another card i i believe you can see the card advantage here by now even if i'm not able to play this power it's still not drawing the the top the a power card from the deck and that is also an advantage getting the endless nightmare back could have also gone a bit more aggro on that turn, but elected not to. Edict of Linrai, trying to kill that one, but I can devour it, or play Worthy Cause and kill their unit, but I'd rather draw two cards here. I mean, don't worry guys, he'll be back. You'll see, you'll see. Sure. No blocks, no tricks. And now we can either attack them for a lot. We can draw with Shrine of Carvet. We can draw a lot of cards with Dova. We can also play something like Profane Nexus. That is gonna go uh, last rites, sacrificing Ephemeral Wisp, getting another power getting two more wisps 
uh, back from our void. And if we play Shrine to Carve it now, we have a ton of attackers. And suddenly, out of nowhere, we can attack the opponent for 11, gain 11 health. So the opponent was attacking us from turn 2 onwards. And suddenly, we're at 31. Safe and sound. Savage Incursion. Okay, they're dealing 3 damage here and drawing 3 cards because we have at least 10 cards in our void. Sure. That's a very good card, by the way. And playing the Vestige. But uh, what are we going to do here? We can probably attack for lethal. With something like Play Dova. Or Play Endless Nightmare and this. Sacrifice one of our zero ones. Silence and kill their unit. And look, we can attack for a ton. Now this is shifting gears from a very defensive position into attacking with a ton of tokens and ending the game at 53 health. That's a huge deal on Shrine to Carve It. On to game three. Game Dragon. No red. We do have Nahid's Faithful and a Devourer. But this is a redraw. We don't have any pieces of the, of the real engine here. This could be a cool Nahid's choice on turn 2 into Carver on turn 3, hoping to draw into more power. Yes. Crack the earth, but I'd rather create two, not one. Mmm, fodder. Numbing cold, sure. So let's play, let's do what we plan. So play Carver, hope to draw power, but it's just a devour for one that is probably gonna get negated. But I still want to get rid of that, uh, uh, that numbing cold. Which is why I'm sacrificing my cultists and that devour we've drawn just to do exactly that. But uh, we do need to draw some power, so then we can have Endless Nightmare Recursion. Kato. Kato is also kind of nice. But I opted to go for Nightmare first. Sacrifice it. Crack the earth, costing zero. Sure. I'm not swapping anything. I don't know what I'm gonna need from the market. I have another Crack the Earth in hand. So, skip. Just skip the, mar the merchanting. Pearl's Choice. What are they getting? Is it Avigraft? It usually is Avigraft. Is Avigraft in the format even? Forbidden Rider Outcast, making Carver much, much less able to attack. Display of Destruction, but still having no power to play it. Ephemeral Wisp. I mean, I'm playing it, but I could have also played Kato and just let the Wisp go to the Void and then get it back later. But I could have also played the Wisp, combusted the opponent's face, uh, the opponent's unit. Now we're playing Kato and sacrificing the pup and being very close to the giant's territory and still not drawing the third power. And we are rather deep into the deck right now. Headhunter. Where are they going to put the wanted poster? Probably on the Kato. But they opted not to do anything. And uh, I think I opted to attack with Kato first because I do have that Ark of Soul in the market. Ark Market. Now I can play 
I could play Arc of Soul, but I thought I'm gonna play Praxis Banner, get the Wisp, sacrifice the Wisp off of Arc of Soul, uh, get the Wisp back, and we can even use Carver to uh, to draw a card off of that Wisp. But turns out the opponent wanted to negate the Arc of Soul because we are stuck at very low power. I have to click on continue. Sacrifice Kato. But I already did play a power this turn. So that is unfortunate. Just checking. Uh, still just getting a Totemite pop, but hopefully the second Kato is already going to give us some giants. Sure. Don't care about this attack. And Pup is getting a poster. Sure. Fortunately, the opponent is not putting any pressure on us. I think I still want to sacrifice the Pup to try and draw something. And that's a power. That's going to give us uh, Ephemeral Wisp. Playing Shrine to carve it. And attacking with the Wisp for two. And back to 25 health. Just like nothing happened. Arch Griffin Patriarch is not a huge deal here. They're just drawing one card off of the Mark of Shame that is on our carver. And right now I'm thinking whether to drag to grab a card from the market or not yet. I could get rid of one of those displays of destruction. I'm, I want to keep Devour in case the opponent gets rid of my carver. Yeah, let's sacrifice this unit. Draw power maybe. No, it's another carver, sure. So let's play that carver. Let's sacrifice the first carver. No, not yet. Let's play Wisp. Let's sacrifice it to the evil powers of Combust. Attack with these two. Ship back the turn. And we can we have Devour up or we have Display up. Heavy graft, finally. And to my astonishment, they are targeting the cultists, but that is exactly why I had my devour up. So, yes, there is a curse on us. Uh, but, uh, yeah, heavy graft doesn't do anything right now. I opted to go for Seed of Mystery to get that Ephemeral Wisp back. Dova, the Fearmonger. Sacrificing this unit for everything over here to be bigger and chargeable. And drawing a card off of Dova. And drawing an Aheed's Faithful here. And Aheed's Faithful can sacrifice the Carver with the Curse. Get bigger. But we're also drawing a card off of Dova now. And uh, given that we have a 7 attack, a 6 attack and a 3 attack. If the opponent wants to block the 3-1, they're dying. So our Carver is safe to attack here. And they are going down to three. And we are more than halfway through Dova's Mastery. And the game is almost over now. Misery Walker, that's not a huge deal. Permafrost is kind of a deal, but not a lot. Not by a lot. I could do several things here. I do have one Ephemeral Wisp in the Void. I could play this one, sacrifice it to have a, something sacrificed. To draw a card, to draw a card. We have a Combust, we have a ton of things. I can get this Seed of Mystery, get those two back. 
play combust off of Carver or Dova, kill their unit, or just deal three to it, attack with two wisps for four out of nowhere, and win the game. Okay, this is game number three. Now let's head on over back to the studio and talk about what other cards we can play in this deck. Welcome back, everyone. So I hope you're enjoying the theme of the deck and the gameplay so far. Uh, but as I said in the first part of the deck explanation, there's a ton of other things you can have here. And I'm going to go through them right now. So you can... You already know that... Uh, Uh, the Corrupted Mechanic helps with just having a lot of fodder. Uh, not on Corrupted Behemoth, it's only Corrupted by name. Uh, you, you can have a lot of fodder, for example, with Kato. You could be playing Markmaker if you want to go very aggressive or stuff like that. You could go for Entrance Cultist or Two-Face. Uh, but I believe Kato is the best card uh, from all of that. Uh, another... Another sacrifice on a stick, or rather on a cultist, is Eager Offering, and I have seen this card in other versions of this deck. At the start of your turn, sacrifice this to draw two cards, so both proc sacrifice, and draw two cards, have another unit in the void, etc, etc. There is a fan favorite card called Piercing Grief, a 2 cost 3-1 Shadow Nightmare with Charge, Lifesteal and Revenge that says at the end of your turn sacrifice Piercing Grief. And I was running this card in one of the previous versions of this deck uh, because I was thinking about the synergy of Piercing Grief and uh, Induced Madness because you have Induced Madness in play on the opponent. And uh, you're playing Piercing Grief, it gets sacrificed by itself at the end of the turn, and then they have to sacrifice a unit. So that's a combo, but it turns out this is not a great card for this deck, at least in my opinion, unless you're running Flame Bathe Reformation. Once per turn you may pay two to give one of your units exalted, then sacrifice it. So if you're giving your 3-1 Charge Lifesteal Revenge exalted, and sacrificing it before the end of the turn, you're giving the exalted weapon with revenge, etc., etc., on something else. And if you have Shrine to Carve It in play, that is also a huge deal. This is more for combo esque plays with Piercing Grief, but I think there is another version with Reformation and Grief out there right now. Another card that I was running in, uh, in this deck before is Strange Burglar, a 4-cost 5-4 Stone Scar Stranger, and that is already a good stat line. When a player plays a Stranger, that you, uh, their units get plus 1 attack this turn. That's not a huge deal, usually, but the other effect is pay 2, exhaust this unit, and sacrifice another unit to draw 3 cards. Yes, 1, 2, 3, 3 cards, and take 3 damage. As you have seen in the games uh, so far, Life total is usually not a problem if you're running Shrine to Carve It. So this is another good sacrifice outlet. I was running two because I right now I have two copies of the card only. Uh, but I've seen versions with three or four copies as well. And this could be, uh, if you are running more power, if you're running chance, this could be your top end instead of something like Worthy Causes or stuff like that. Because this is a good card. I just don't uh, see any place, any space in this deck to, to be running this. Uh, another another cool piece of combination here uh, could be Xenon Cultist, a 3 cost double shadow cultist, a 2-4 unit that says when one of your other units dies, that unit gets plus 2, plus 2. And the biggest combo of this is with Ephemeral Wisp and Endless Nightmare, recurring them, bringing them back, recurring them, bringing them back. Each time they die, they level up, they get bigger. So after uh, several turns, they are like immense huge threats. But as you have already seen, you don't need Ephemeral Wisps to be 6-8, 6 sevens. Uh, six you just need them to be 0-1s for, for all the effects in this deck. But this is a cute uh, combination, a cute combo that you can be running, especially if you're running an, uh, another market card instead of, for example, Oblivion Spike, that is called Aramot's Machinations. 
And this is more a market card than a main deck card in this deck. I mean, in straight out cultists avoid interaction, this is four of main deck for sure. But in the, in the destruction sacrifice deck, I think it's at max one off in the market. Play a one cost, a two cost and a three cost unit from your void. They get plus one plus one and overwhelm permanently. The biggest problem of running it right now is that I only have one cost and two costs. I have no three costs in the deck whatsoever. If I was running those cultists and some other three cost cards, then yes, that is a great inclusion in the market. But right now it's not. Last card I wanted to talk about is Mysterious Waystone, a five cost double shadow cursed relic. Uh, that says at the end of the cursed player's turn, deal one damage to them, you gain one health. When you sacrifice a unit, increase this ability by one. For a moment, I was running one copy of this in the market as well, but I wasn't going for it anyway. If you include just four copies of it main deck, or if you're running a deck in Throne and you have three main one market, you can build your deck around this, but you have to have more sacrifice effects for sure, because you need to get it up to three, four, five, six. Uh, and if the opponent is taking six damage at the end of each of their turns, sure. Right now in Expedition, in a format where Banish is back, where you have this junction where you have other stuff that deals with relics and curses, uh, this is rather flimsy, at least right now. So yeah, these are some other options that you could uh, consider uh, going for here. I think the core is for sure Shrine to Carve It, Profane Nexus, probably, more more likely than not, and Ephemeral Wisps, and Carvers, and Displays of Destruction, and Combusts, and Crack the Earth. Oh my goodness, what to take out? I have no idea. But maybe you do. And if you do, just please let me know in the comments below how you would change this deck for the better, I hope. Anyway, this is going to be it for me for now. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the deck explanation and the games. If you did not have enough of the games, you can uh, check out my Eternal Highlight series. Uh, when this video is getting released, there is also another Eternal Highlight number 131. Also a game with this deck, Assault on the Farm. Uh, uh, an older version of this deck that was also running Piercing Griefs. Uh, but uh, similar, uh, similar piece of technology anyway. Um, and there are some older Eternal Highlights videos with uh, before Echoes of Eternity was online, when I was uh, trying uh, a similar deck in Throne, but it was a much worse deck for sure. Uh, those were, I think you're gonna you're gonna find them. They usually have something about Granadins in their names, like several several Eternal Highlights ago. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching and remember if you're enjoying the content, click on subscribe, doesn't cost you anything. And for now, Kalabovich out, see you next week.